What's going on, everybody? Uh, back again for another um, Revit Help episode here. So, um, the last episode, when it came to uh, basics for Revit families, we talked about reference planes um, and the origins and whatnot. So, uh, today we're going to talk about adding um, parameters and uh, make, making the um, a, a family parametric so you can have multiple instances in a project and have different sizes so for example you know like casework is a great example you may have a 24 inch wide cabinet or an 18 inch wide cabinet or the heights different things like that so we're just going to deal with some basics here depths widths and uh, height and the proper way to uh, apply those parameters so just to start i have um, just as a little bit of a review I have my center left right center front back both of those are the origin and then what I did was I actually came in here and I created reference planes a left reference plane a right reference plane a front and a back and then if I go to elevation I also created a uh, top elevation that will um, control the height so uh, first I'll start with um, the uh, a kind of don't it's a common uh, mistake when applying the parameters so I guess really first off is I will I did create three different parameters so if I go into the family types and I created a depth height and width parameter already um, and the way you do that is uh, there's two ways but basically if you go under family types you go to new parameter um, in this case, um, this window will pop up. You have family parameter, share parameter. Um, for now, we'll just talk about family parameter. So you're basically uh, applying a, a, a normal, um, uh, a more simple, simpler uh, parameter. And let's just say, I'll just call this test, right? And then um, you have different things like, you know, common discipline, uh, architect, or I'm sorry, structural, HVAC, electrical, piping, etc. Um, types of parameters are all kinds of different ones, but uh, we're just talking about length today. And then the group parameter under, um, so in this case is dimensions, but there, see, you can see there's all kinds of different other places. And that's really just um, has to do with the property bar and where you want to put the, um, put that parameter in here, how you want to organize the property bar of the, the element. Um, and then finally, the last two is um, type or instance. So type will be like an actual type when you're editing a type of a family and changing. So let's say if you had a piece of case work that is um, 24 inches and you have a case where you need one that's 30 inches, you would duplicate it in the project, um, create a 30 inch type and apply the 30 inch width you know, to that. Uh, instance will allow to have multiple instances. So let's say you had that same piece of case work um, but there's varying heights, but you don't want to create a different type for that. You just wanted to kind of control that from instance to instance. You would make a parameter an instance instead, and you can report it um, when it comes to formulas. And that. We're not going to get into that, but basically we'll just stay with type and instance. For this case, we will. Um, these are going to be made into um, types. Uh, maybe I'll show at the end a, a little example of where it is for the instance. So, so we have these different... Um, parameters already set uh, now we just need to apply them to the uh, the uh, geometry so uh, first off I'm going to show you um, a common mistake so in order to, to create the um, parameters is you actually use dimensions um, a common mistake I see is actually dimensions applied to the geometry itself so for example um, uh, I, I, as I mouse over here, you can see here it's uh, highlighted. It says extrusion shape handle, handle. So that is the actual geometry. If I hit the tab button, it'll go to the reference plane. Because I'm over both of those, that's how you can kind of switch over when you have geometry. This is whether it's a family editor or even in a project. When you have stuff kind of close or overlapping, hitting the tab button will, will kind of cycle through the different pieces. And if you kind of wait for a second, it will um, kind of mouse over. The, it'll tell you what that what that object is. So we want the um, extrusion shape handle. Where is it? There we go. Okay. And shape handle here. So I have the dimensions there. Now, if you go into, you click on the dimension up here, you'll see a label. 
So um, you can create a new parameter. That's another way too. So if you wanted a parameter to create, it'll come back to that window. Or because I've already identified those, um, those are those parameters are available to apply to a dimension. So in this case, we're going to do depth, and then in this case, we're going to do width. Right? Okay. Now, if I go back to the parameters, let's say I change the depth to three feet, and I want the width to five feet, and I hit apply. So you see here what happened was the um, there's no dimensions or anything applied to these these re um, reference planes. So they um, basically they just kind of um, the the shape changed, but the reference planes did not move. So um, that can get into kind of well here actually I will load it. Let me load it into the project with that change, right? So I'm gonna write the existing version, go back here. Now, why is that why is that an issue? Well, if we go to a line, if you remember in the, the previous one, oh, hold on. Oh, you know what? I know what it is. Um, let's go back. We'll show you this example as well. So let me load this back into the project again. Oop, there's no different change. Let me change one little thing. Let me change the Let's see here. Let's change the per, the width to um, let's even make it bigger, six feet. Okay, so it's so if I load into project, if I go to override existing version and its parameter values, right? Now you just saw that the family changed. Let's go back to the first floor. Now if I do an alignment, there should be that's the left reference plane. So that alignment is not here so i can align to the geometry but that actual left reference plane that actually if i zoom way out that it's going to go to it's going to go to those reference planes if you remember the the first one where it kind of prioritizes um alignments and move snaps it's going to go to that not the geometry itself um you know you can kind of tab through um and then use that as alignment but you know again you know, if you're zoomed out here and you have multiple instances, it's going to be harder to use that as alignment or a movement, um, you know, a snap, basically a snap to there. So um, it's also inconsistent. So if you have multiple instances, uh, it's harder to control this geometry because now um, let's go to um, if you want this geometry to actually be centered, you can do that. I mean, again, do something like this. Oop, and I want, let's say I wanted it there, and you wanted it to be equal, equal from there. It's back here. The geometry kind of matches, all that different stuff. But you can see here it needed to be equal, equal. The width changed when I did that. Now if, let me go back here. Let's see what happens if we do six feet. Okay. So six feet worked. It's, it's, it's actually equal, equal off of the center line. But again, these reference planes don't move. You don't have that alignment, you know, different things. Now, this is a pretty simple geometry. As you get into more complex geometry, um, it's not going to act the way you necessarily want it to. Um, so the proper way to actually to do everything is to actually have these parameters. Let me actually let me undo this. And what was, I forget what this was. This was like two foot 10 or something. So let me put this back. Oh no, it was a two foot four. Is really the way you want to deal with um, uh, the different parameters or, you know, with parametric modeling is the dimension shouldn't be to the geometry. The, geometry, the, ge the um, dog's barking upstairs. Um, the these dimensions should be applied to the reference planes so i'm going to actually just make sure that ugh, sorry if you can hear the dog barking <laughs> um all of these dimensions want to go to reference planes um because it's more reliable it's easier to um deal with and um, here, actually, I'm going to do another one here because I want this to be centered in all, all directions. Now, last part is 
to make well see now that now now that that is done with the reference planes let's um let's change this to three let's change this to six again hit apply and oh i see missed something let me make these um depth and width Make that equal. Oh, let's make that width. Okay, so you can see that the geometry moved. Now, that's fine with here, and this is where I think sometimes um, things get overlooked here. Is as you get into more complex geometries with your with your families um, that this is not this geometry is not necessarily locked to these reference planes you can see here if there if there were some constraint real constraints and all of that if I would have moved that um, there would have been a warning that you're removing a constraint um, so that's not really locked to there so if I came back in here let's say I changed this to five feet hit apply um, there still is a little bit of well here here I'm showing the constraints there isn't a constraint at all because um, there would it would be shown here so it's not reliable like even though that changed and again I'm it's a very simple thing here let's actually make this like 15 feet let's see if it okay it did it did still move so this there's a little bit of a <laughs> Um, actually, let's go in the edit extrusion. Let's see if there's anything shown there. Nope, nothing shown there. There's not a real constraint. It's it's um it's kind of hard to explain. But basically, what you want to make sure is uh, even though right now this is still moving, like these, the, there is a bit of a there's a fan. I'm gonna say there's a phantom constraint going on between these plane these planes of the geometry and the uh, the reference planes. To really lock these in, um, the um, way to do that is if I go to edit, I can do one of two ways. It's basically alignment. So if I aligned here, took this edge, and you see this lock, you want to lock these into place. So we'll go around here. The other way to do it is if you were actually in the edit extrusion, you have these lines. If I click on, oh, that doesn't show it there. Um, you can do that. Do it this way as well. Lock those in. And normally if you do that, you can see that the lock is there. So I did actually two different ways here. Now if I go like this, you can see now I have constraints are not satisfied. I'm gonna remove the constraint. I'm gonna remove this constraint. And then I wanna go into just for simplicity state sake, I want to see these locks where they are. So I want them in the same, like, let's just say workspace. So if I do a line, lock that one, a line, lock this one, hit OK. Now, as I go in here, so if I change the width, let's say I change this width to six feet and the depth to one feet, one foot, hit apply. Now, both the reference planes and the uh, the, ge the geometry um, match. And then if I go load into project, I am going to overwrite existing version and its parameter values just so it changes. I go back to the first floor. Now, if I do alignments, you know, I had that strong reference now along the, uh, the same edge, unlike before where the strong reference wasn't constrained to those edges. So I, I didn't have the uh, ability to, it, it was a little bit tougher to, um, you know, align or move to the, uh, the different, the different sides. So, um, yeah. Oh, wow. 15 minutes. So I'm going to leave it at that in terms of, um, this lesson or, you know, information. Uh, again, this is, uh, just kind of working through some basics of uh, family modeling. Um, so, uh, again, you know, if you have any questions, please comment below and uh, also, you know, 
like and subscribe and uh, you know for more Revit content or other content that is on my um, my company Dauntless Design Collaboratives page here. So until then, have a good day. We'll talk to you soon.